Hi, this is Chris Shavako with Shavako Capital Management. In part three of our six-part series, we will review Fed speeches and publications to gain a better understanding of how quantitative easing may impact the economy and financial markets. According to Brian P. Sack of the New York Federal Reserve Bank, the effect of asset purchases on the economy remains a point of ongoing debate, with some uncertainty about the channels through which such purchases operate and the magnitude of those effects. In particular, by purchasing longer-term securities, the Federal Reserve removes duration risk from the market, which should help reduce the term premium that investors demand for holding longer-term securities. That effect should, in turn, boost other asset prices as those investors displaced by the Fed's purchases would likely seek to hold alternative types of securities. Nevertheless, balance sheet policy can still lower longer-term borrowing costs for many households and businesses, and it adds to the household wealth by keeping asset prices higher than they otherwise would be. It seems highly unlikely that the economy is completely insensitive to borrowing costs and wealth or other changes in broad financial conditions. Notice the references to boosting asset prices, lowering borrowing costs, adding to household wealth, keeping asset prices higher. From Mr. Sachs' perspective, the Fed buys intermediate term treasuries, which drives down the yield for new investors. Mr. Sack hypothesizes those new investors may decide to purchase other bonds, maybe even bonds with longer maturities, as they search for higher yields. As the Fed pushes demand to other areas of the bond market, longer term interest rates would fall. As new investors look at their options, they may decide to purchase other high yielding assets, such as dividend paying stocks, since the Fed's actions have helped make yields unattractive in more conservative investments like treasuries. If the Fed promises to remain in the market with quantitative easing for an extended period or for a minimum specific period, the risk associated with holding stocks, higher yielding bonds, commodities, precious metals, and real estate are reduced. If you think in extremes, if the Fed stated that all treasuries would pay no interest for the next five years, investors would move to investments with more risk in search of higher yields. A good way to summarize quantitative easing is as follows. Quantitative easing attempts to lower long-term interest rates, keep them low for a fairly well understood period of time, while flooding the economy with cash in an effort to boost both consumption and investment. Like gold, U.S. dollars have value only to the extent that they are strictly limited in supply. But the U.S. government has a technology called a printing press, or today its electronic equivalent, that allows it to produce as many U.S. dollars as it wishes at essentially no cost. By increasing the number of U.S. dollars in circulation, or even by credibly threatening to do so, the U.S. government can also reduce the value of a dollar in terms of goods and services, which is equivalent to raising the prices in dollars of those goods and services. We conclude that, under a paper money system, a determined government can always generate higher spending and hence positive inflation. Just as we used an extreme example previously, saying if the Fed held Treasury rates at zero for five years, Ben Bernanke was also using an extreme example to illustrate a concept. The important takeaway for us is the concept, which is to print money and devalue the purchasing power of U.S. dollars in your wallet and bank account. Based on the government's and Fed's extreme actions during the financial crisis, we believe it is safe to say we have a determined government. As money managers, we cannot underestimate how determined our government will be in terms of how much money are they willing to print 
and what assets are they willing to buy? If buying treasury bonds does not work, what prevents them from moving to corporate bonds, stocks, residential housing, or commercial real estate? We know that statement sounds extreme, but three or four years ago, having the Fed buy treasury bonds or having the government take over AIG seemed extreme. And yet, they took place right before our eyes. This video is part of a six-part series of videos on quantitative easing. You can access all six videos via the QE videos link on our homepage. At Shivaco Capital Management, we wish you nothing but success in your personal, professional, and investment endeavors. Have a great day. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivaco Capital Management LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.